Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we've been looking at the administration of the FCT and especially the Abuja Master Plan. And our guest has been the FCT Minister, Mohamed Bello. Now, tell us the approval process because uh, we have reports of um, people coming up with illegal structures and getting and not getting the proper approval to erect structures. And we now see people erecting structures on unapproved areas like flood plains. So what are you doing in this regard? I think I, I need to clarify one very important fact. The building that collapsed in Gorimpa did not go through the FCT approval process. It was a building that was being supervised. It was a building that whose design and construction was handled by the Federal Housing Authority. And that occurred because of a gray area in terms of the conflicting rules as to which authority provides the technical approval for a building to come up. Apparently, that gray area is something which immediately this administration came in. We have been communicating and discussing with the FHA management so that we streamline. And the general consensus is that all buildings in Abuja have to follow the law that says all buildings in Abuja should be under the purview of the FCT relevant technical departments, which is the Department of Development Control. So it's very important for you to understand that the building that collapsed was not approved, was not uh, regulated, was not, uh, was not uh, under the purview of the officials of the FCTA when it was conceived and even construction commenced. What are you doing to forestall such an unpleasant cycle of building collapse in the FCT? Apply the law and make sure that every building goes through the right scrutiny to ensure that uh, everything is done correctly. And I'm sure there are thousands of hundreds of thousands of buildings in Abuja with very solid bridges. And uh, in fact, I think Abuja has the, the, in terms of infrastructure, solid infrastructure and quality building, I think probably the best in this country. So if all these years they have been there and solid, that shows you that the institutions have been doing working well and they continue to work well. This is an isolated incident that occurred in an estate that was not directly monitored by, by the FCTA. But with this experience now, we have come to the realization that the standards applicable in the city center in respect of all projects being handled by the FCTA, be they bridges, dams, roads, or high-rise buildings, the strict regulatory framework and procedure used in giving them approval by extension has to apply to all aspects of the city, be they government estates or private estates or even simple developments. Now let's come to infrastructural developments now. Um, you recently, you made a disclosure of a cherry news that the Abuja Light Rail project is 70% completed. But you also said that the project is going to be fully completed by December 2017. That's 15 months from now. So what are you putting in place to ensure that this project beats the deadline of December 2017? The Abuja Light Rail project is one of the important infrastructure projects initiated by the previous administrations of the FCTA. And it's a project that we are trying our very best to complete. And like you rightly observed, our, our targeted date of completion is December 2017. Lane of the tracks are almost completed. The bridges have always almost been completed. Overall, completion is 70%. What now remains is the completion of some of the stations, the railway stations, particularly the central station within the central area. And uh, the other aspects are, of course, the eventual ar importation and arrival of the locomotives that will run the system, together with the signaling and uh, telecommunication infrastructure. But, of course, you know, it, these are all well planned. and. Uh, we are, I, the contractors are working on schedule. We have made adequate financial provision for the, for the project uh, in, in this year's budget. 
and of course other provisions will be also made in the 2017 budget. Now let's come to cattle grazing. This has been one controversial issue, um, but you came out with a strong declaration against the arbitrary grazing of cattle along the Abuja city center. But one wonders, looking deep into this issue, that is there a sufficient legislation to ensure that this grazing of cattle falls in line with this current administration's policy? The policy is very straightforward. It's, it's, uh, it's basically that with the population size of Abuja, with the heavy vehicular uh, movement within the city, there is no way we can have cattle also you know, competing for, for space. Uh, so that's it. And it's, we have relevant laws within the Abuja Environmental Protection Board that caters for that. You know, cattle rearing is all covered under stray animals and all these related bylaws that we already have. Uh, and I think uh, what has happened was from our investigation is that recent incidences of cattle rustling uh, in some of the farmlands in the outskirts of the city, especially the area councils and the satellite towns, had uh, encouraged or rather had made a number of those that own these cattle to bring their cattle nearer to their houses. Because actually most of the cattle you see in pockets of 50s, 10s, 30s along or by the side of the streets are actually owned by, by residents within the city. And we got to know because we, we've arrested quite a number of cattle based on the appropriate laws and uh, you'll be surprised to find the number of people who came in and said actually these were their cattle. So we are encouraging them to, to really move them to the farms outside the city because really for the safety of motorists and safety of pedestrians and so on, I mean simply there is no space you know, for cattle to be roaming in the city. It's, it's always been there, maybe particularly the last few months because of the issue of cattle rustling. And they are, you, you, you notice a lot of, you know, but I think that is a straightforward thing we are, we are trying to clear them because really cattle should not be, not only cattle, even any all kinds of animals will not be allowed within the city. Now to education. Now, recently you read the riot act to secondary schools principal in the federal capital territory that they must ensure at least a 50% rate pass mark of all the students or risk re resignation. And um, the question is, what are you putting in place to ensure or to assist the principal of achieving this target? Of course, the, as you know, education is paramount and it's a fundamental right of every citizen. And when I looked at the statistics, I realized that the performance of this average student in public schools uh, within the FCT is not as par at par with other areas that we would like to benchmark and you know consider as our peers so that's why we had to speak to the principals for them to encourage better quality teaching and also try to up these numbers uh, with regards to performance during WAEC for instance and NECO exams and we intend to encourage the schools also to be better centers of learning by upgrading facilities first and foremost we have realized that uh, some of these public schools do not even have perimeter fences, you know, where you can really give students a secluded environment where they could learn peacefully. And, you know, in an urban setting like, uh, uh, you know, like Abuja, it's very important for, 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 for this kind of facility. So we'll upgrade their facilities, provide additional security for them, you know, better funding, and of course also try to provide them with appropriate learning materials. But more importantly, our inspectorate unit it's been enforced and encouraged now to really enforce regulations, school regulations. And that's why a few months ago we had no option but really to, to close down so many schools. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time. What is the federal government doing to address high cost of accommodation in Abuja? Find out from the FCT Minister when we return.